going to the river, bringing sins I cannot bear. Come and cleanse me, come forgive me, Lord, I need to meet you there. In these waters, healing mercy flows with freedom from despair. I am going to that river, Lord, I need to meet you Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Come and join me. In the river, come find life beyond compare. He is calling, He is waiting. Jesus longs to meet you there. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender. Take my hand now, lead me closer, Lord, I need to meet you there. So on Sunday night, just a couple days ago, I uh, went to Mass with Paul and with a couple of friends, and after Mass, we requested that the priest take a few minutes for us to uh, allow both Paul and I to go in for confession or, or reconciliation, as it's often called. And uh, I felt a little sorry that we bothered the poor priest because he clearly had quite a bit of things to do and he was very rushed. You could tell that he was one of those priests where he was going to rush in, but he wasn't going to do a bad job. And I asked him right at the end for the last thing I needed before the trip, because before pilgrimage, you are supposed to um, go to confession, and you're also supposed to ask the priest for a blessing. So I did that. I asked the priest for a blessing. Now, typically, um, it's a mixed bag when I go to confession whether I feel forgiven or not. It's actually an interesting question, since... Um, in a Catholic confession, the priest grants you absolution for your sins on behalf of Christ, basically saying your sins are forgotten, they are no more, um, they're on the bottom of the ocean, they're um, as far as the east is from the west. Those are some of the, the biblical metaphors for our, our sins being so far from us that we'll never be able to account to them and not have to feel guilty anymore. And sometimes I feel things and sometimes I don't. And of course, when a confession is very rushed, in, as it was in this case, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to feel much of anything except being rushed. However, when I asked the priest for a blessing, um, I felt just warm all over as he blessed me for this trip, as he asked for God's protection and wisdom for me. and. Um, it reminded me so much of when I was confirmed as a Catholic. Now, um, in Catholic theology, you need to be baptized to be, you know, quote unquote, saved. And the um, I had been baptized in a what the Catholics would consider a legitimate way, so I didn't need to be baptized again. I just needed to be confirmed into the Catholic Church. And I, I very much remember my confirmation, and I, I remember very clearly the um, the anointing with oil, uh, where they 
will make the sign of the cross on your forehead um, both, uh, three times. And in the blessing that the priest gave me for, uh, for this pilgrimage, there was also the, that exact symbol. And it just made me feel so blessed. It's, it's hard to explain that kind of like just feeling warm all over and knowing you're doing the right thing. It was so beautiful. Um, and then as the priest hurried to turn out the lights and get out of there, I was just uh, basking for a moment to that feeling before I went in and uh, did penance. That was one of the ways in which I prepared for the trip. A devotion to Our Lady, Mary, the Mother of God, is firmly rooted in the traditions and the faith of the Catholic Church. There are many titles that we call her by. I'm going to give you an example from the Litany of Loretto. A litany is a form of prayer that uses repetition of phrases and is sometimes chanted. They're based on scripture and developed over a long period of time. The Litany of Loretto is a very famous one and features many of the names and titles given to Mary, Mother of God. Virgin of Virgins, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church of divine grace, most pure, most chaste, undefiled, immaculate, amiable, admirable, mother of the creator, of the savior, prudent, venerable, renowned, powerful, merciful, faithful, the mirror of justice, the seat of wisdom, the cause of our joy, the mystical rose, the ark of the covenant, the gate of heaven, health of the sick, refuge of sinners, comforter of the afflicted, Queen of angels, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, virgins, and saints. Conceived without original sin, assumed into heaven. Queen of the most holy rosary, queen of peace. Those are just a few of the examples of titles that we give to Mary. And many of those titles are subject to particular devotions that have been developed toward, towards Mary to help us think of her in particular ways. The particular title of Mary and the devotion that follows it the one that has inspired my heart the most is Mary, untire of knots, or undoer of knots. This theology is based on St. Thomas Aquinas' discussion of the role of Jesus and of Mary in the saving of the world, Jesus being the second Adam, the one who undoes the sin of the first, and Mary being the second Eve, the one who undoes the sin of the first by saying yes to God. In saying yes to the angel and inviting Jesus to dwell in her body, she becomes the first Christian, the first one who invites Christ to dwell in her. In doing so, she begins to undo the knots of sin that have developed in our lives because of the original sin and all of the sin that followed it. In addressing Mary as the untire of knots, we ask her to intercede for us with her son, to ask him to help us deal with the things that seem impossible, problems with money, our marriages, our relationships, unemployment, sickness, loneliness, fear, worry, all of the things that seem to have no solution. The candle you see here is one I made myself from an ordinary devotional candle that I bought from the dollar store. It features an image of Mary Untire of Knots done by Johann Schmittner in 1700, inspired by the words of St. Augustine. In this image, Mary unties knots in a cord with her heel on the head of a serpent and the Holy Spirit hovering above her. Often, saints and ordinary people like myself will compose their own prayers of devotion. I developed a simple set of prayers of devotion that mix my own words with the traditional words of the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. After I finish the Hail Mary, I say a very simple phrase. Our Lady, untire of knots, I have a knot for you to untie. Once I have said these words, I elaborate on what the knot is, what is going on in my life, or the life of another person. After I finish doing that, I finish with the words, please untie my knots. And then I go into Hail Mary again. Pope Francis said, Mary is the mother who patiently and lovingly brings us to God so that he can untangle the knots of our soul. I gained a great deal of peace throughout the trip in praying this particular prayer. I am pleased to share it with you. I am here at Queen's House Retreat Center where they've graciously allowed me to um, use the grounds for prayer. Um, if you listen closely, other than the sounds of traffic, you'll also hear some lovely bird song in this area. They have the beautiful grounds for uh, prayer and meditation and uh, they have a wonderful retreat center inside as well, but I don't want to bother anyone that's um, 
in, in for a retreat. Give you a quick uh, view of Queen's House. This is the Queen's House Retreat Center. It is a really beautiful grounds and space for people to come and pray. I'm going to be videotaping a little bit of the uh, area where I will be praying today and I'll be bringing some intentions forward as well. Of, of peace in my heart like I haven't for a while. I've, uh, I mean, it's day one. It's day one and I feel like I've conquered some fears and been real with myself in a new way today. I've prayed for the intentions of many people that I know. I have, uh, I think, started the process of repairing and restoring my own relationship with God, which has been troubled for many years, even even after I've really answered that call to become Catholic and to enjoy my faith more. I've often done that from more of an academic standpoint, um, learning about God, seeking knowledge and understanding more than addressing my heart, my needs, and the needs of my family and my friends and others. And a big part of this trip for me is working on that and changing my way of thinking and changing my way of, uh, of reacting to others and being completely real about what is necessary and good for my heart and being here and spending time in the sacred space is the first step on a very long journey on that, on that front. I definitely cried. <laughs> I definitely cried. I uh, looked up into the face of, of Mary and her son in this little grotto space and I I poured out my heart, started to anyway. My heart, for those of you who know me, I talk a lot about my life, about my feelings, but my heart I have a pretty big stopper in most of the time. And my feelings close to the surface I talk about a lot, but the, the deep feelings, the stuff deep in my heart is private and something I don't speak about a lot and not very honest about how difficult life feels or how happy I am. But today I'm starting to be honest with myself and with God and hopefully with others in a way, in a new way, not just no filter, but 
with a filter of love and grace and compassion for myself. Uh, the sun came out at one point while I was praying, but it's pretty overcast here today. Um, and of course the sun came out at a wonderfully meaningful time. <laughs> um, it's cold out here. I'm, I'm frozen, and uh, there's definitely some suffering in that which I am offering up to Christ. Uh, maybe I'll talk at some point about this concept of offering up suffering and, and what suffering means in the world. But for now, I just wanted to share, I guess, how I feel after that first big session of prayer, and I wanted to take some time out and time away before I spent more time with family and friends, which is what I'm going to be doing the rest of the day. So, uh, this is a really special beginning. A really special and beautiful beginning. Uh, yeah. Thanks for listening.